Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm just about to start uh, some upgrades to this 650 in the winter. And this will be the first one of a few. I'm not sure how many how many times I'm going to break up the video. It might, be, it might run too long. But we're going to put a... Today we're going to put a clutch in. The Recluse uh, Torque Drive Clutch. And other videos after this, we're going to... Uh, Put in this bad boy. SNS cam. Really nicely made, actually. It has uh, the lobes on this can are, are larger, not higher, because you can't change that. But they are, uh, your valves are open sooner and they'll stay open longer. Because they're this this part is actually wider than your stock one, and since you're doing that, and you're probably going to disturb the uh, the base gasket, I went ahead and uh, ordered a set of these SNS SNS pistons. These aren't big bore, they're the same size. The only thing different, well, besides being really nicely made, is their high compression. If you can see the, uh, the raised part, it's not flat like your stock ones are going to be. So it's gonna up the uh, compression to 11 to one from uh, nine and a half stock ones. So that should be fun. <laughs> and lastly, after you get it all back together, I got a uh, Dynajet, Dynajet Commander 6. To handle uh, the fueling a little better since uh, the other upgrades. Dinger 6 just, just uh, replaces the Dinger 5. Don't know what other changes it is. That the, I'm sure there's something. But anyway, there's the parts for the clutch we're going to put in today. This kit has uh, three extra friction plates than your stock one. Though they take up the same amount of space inside your clutch, how they do that is uh, these steel ones are are thinner than they are in the stock. Then you get three other ones that are, they look to be aluminum. Actually, the ones in your stock ones are all aluminum, except for the uh, dry plates, I think, are still steel. But your friction plates in that are, are all aluminum. And yeah, these are your, uh, we call them drive, plate, drive plates. They're steel plates. And I'll show you where they go. Because they go slightly different, they lock in a slightly different spot than these do. And we get a new set of springs. You'll see when I take the other ones out that these are a little, these are a little smaller, but they're much stiffer than the, your stock ones. It's still not supposed to be able, to, not supposed to give you a really hard grip though. It's supposed to be still okay. And then we have these, which is your stock one does not have. They should have, because this is a good uh, little invention there. These are uh, 
clutch bas basket sleeves. And I'll get into that when I we open it up. I've not done this before, but after looking what's involved, it's not hard at all. If you can do your tap, it's fine. You think that's easy? This is a piece of cake. The only tools you really need, five mil to open your case. I'm not sure if I need a little hammer. It might be a little stuck with a gasket in there. If not, you, just, you know, I would just use this to tap on the, uh, the tabs that are on the engine. All you need is a 10 millimeter wrench to take the clutch apart. Clutch, uh, a wrench or a socket. I'm going to use this just because it's fast to spin. A pair of rubber gloves would be a good idea because it's it's going to have oil. I have the oil drained out of here right now, but it's it's going to have some oil left in there somewhere. Put your clutch plates. The pattern of the, the friction material on here is, is, is much different than the, uh, your stock one. Your stock one is just straight lines. This is all, it's supposed to help in oiling, oiling to get in there, fluid. These are all the same size. And then you got three that aren't the same size. One that's going to go in first before everything else. And the last two are going to be at the end. And I'll show you that. Same with these uh, drive plates. All these are the same. Except for one. Which the inside diameters. I should see actually is a little different. See that one compared to that one. This one goes on towards the end too. And they say while I'm taking these apart. They recommend you soak these in oil. Use your motor oil that you're going to use in the bike. I'm guessing just to, so the oil permeates into this friction material a little bit. So I'm going to, well, before I take them apart, I'm going to be soaking. The, they say five minutes. I'm sure it's going to be a little longer than that. Let them soak in there while we're taking a taking it apart. The same oil you use in the bike. It's uh, well, I use fifteen fifty. The the dealer recommends this now instead of the uh, ten fifty. So I'll put these over close to the bike. Now, these are different. I don't need this anymore. It's very slight, but there uh, there is a different different sizes than these. The sides, one side is completely flat, and the other side is rounded. You can feel it. You can feel which one at which side you're on, just running your finger over the edge. One side is, uh, is rounded, the other side is flat. I already oriented these. Also, the, uh, the round side is facing up, so when I'm building it, I don't have to go searching for it right away. I've already done it. Okay. Now, since this is the... Uh, 
The small one goes towards the end. I'll leave it upside down next to the bike so I can just take one in each one. Each one should build a, build a clutch. Ugh. All right. Let's get to it. All right. I already removed the uh, clutch cable because obviously it's going to be in the way. And when you take the cover off, you don't want to be still attached to the bike. So that came off already. And we'll just start taking these out. Five millimeter Allen. I got a plastic tub underneath the engine and plastic on the ground. So I don't know how much is still going to be in that cover when I take it off. Might be a mess. Might be not much at all. I did replace all these bolts some time ago. These are uh, anodized gold. Go with all the other gold accents I have all over the place. They are titanium though. I got them off of uh, Amazon. I did have stainless steel ones in there from Hitchcock's. They sell a, a stainless steel kit to replace all the other ones just so they don't corrode. You're probably going to need a big gasket too, the gasket that's in here. I got mine. Uh, place down in Texas I'll leave a link to the oh well, I'll leave the website down below they got quite a few parts for this bike and some tools too I got some of the tools I'm gonna need to uh, do the job Almost two more left. Now there's two tabs on this, three tabs, right here, right here, one over here. I'm supposed to help you uh, take this cover off. Don't use a metal hammer, obviously. <sighs> oh, that wasn't that hard. Now to get it off the rest of the way, you're going to have to take this activator and move it. When you move it, then it disconnects from inside. Uh, it wasn't too bad on the oil. But yeah, your, your gasket rips right away. So you're going to have to water one of those to do this. It doesn't come with the clutch, obviously. It costs like $15. It's cheap. How thin it is. There's your uh, inside of your clutch geared. 
and inside this pin here clutch actuator pin it comes in contact with these gears so this rotational force is transferred into a pulling force pulls your clutch out releasing the pressure on all these plates uh, gasket came off pretty clean I just have a, a few tiny little spots where I have to scrape it off and I would use a scraper made of plastic too don't use a metal you want to gouge this aluminum and it could leak on you there's the air uh, your oil lever sight is held in by a, a C clamp a C clip nice Right, here's your clutch, and this is the uh, 10 mils you have to take out. There's not a high amount of torque on these things, I think it's like 12 newtons or something. So, you know how easy they break off. And I'll do this in steps, do a little on each one so it comes off easily doesn't get cockeyed until it comes all the way off Almost there. Okay, this takes the pressure off the springs and off the uh, pressure plate, which is the, that part underneath. There we go. Here's your stock springs. show you uh, the ones that come with this kit see they are tall they're shorter the new ones are shorter but the material is thicker than your stock ones to hold more pressure against all these plates to hold the torque that it's going the torque's going to go up when I change the cam and those uh, pistons, you just slide the pressure plate off. There's your pin, clutch actuator pin. See, it's the, the teeth cut in here. They go into the other part. That's a gear. There's your clutch back. Here's a way to just slide all these out at one shot. You yeah, see the, the pattern on these is it's just little squares as opposed to uh, the other one, stock one. There's a drive plate. Oh, it's got a mark in that one. The 
these are still just like the uh, the new ones that are going on there. Yeah, they are they are rounded on one side than the other. This is the one uh, that goes on first. That's the inside diameter is bigger. There's also two other parts in here that you retain. You don't change these. You leave these in here. Well, I'll just take one out. These are called judder. One's a judder seat. It's, it's just flat. This one's actually rounded on one side. And uh, how it came out was the rounded side was in. It's kept in there. That stays there. Where's our... All right. Take my... Uh... My bits that have been soaking. All right. First one to go on is a is a friction plate that has the inside diameter larger than the other most of them, and you see these uh. Oh, gotta put something else in there first. Something else goes in. You gotta put these sleeves in there. These sleeves go in the uh, in the basket where these most of these plates go. And they go in like this. Got the bottom part. See what this lip. That uh, that goes towards the inside, so we got coverage on the bottom and the sides. Just the larger slots you're putting this in. The other ones uh, you leave alone. What these do is prevent the uh, the friction plates or both plates. Actually, no, it is just the friction plates. From digging into this basket and making a, and making a cutting a little um, marks into it, and they tell you in the instructions if your clutch basket has the marks in it already, like really like saw so I'm like a gear almost. I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen. Then you have to replace it because it's going to move a little more than it's supposed to. When you engage a clutch, the plates will move. I don't. I see tiny little like um, polished areas where the plates would rub against it. But it's not like they show in a picture where actually saw a tooth like like a gear cut into it if you have that you have to stop right there and order a new basket because it's got a lot too much wear in it this is supposed to stop that wear from happening because these are stainless steel stronger than the material they stick on here Just make this make sure this lip is on the inside. Because the thing is spinning, it's it can't push out with these lips in there. They just slide in. And 
and I forgot to put my gloves on, but <laughs> too late now. But I get, you get better feel without gloves anyway. Okay, all our sleeves, these are called the uh, clutch basket sleeves. All those are in now. Now we start putting it clutch back together. The friction ones don't have a side. They're both the same on each both sides. But you put them in with these tabs locking into uh, the basket on the outside. And your uh, steel ones actually go into the greaves on the inside part. And the, the rounded side I'm putting out. Grab another friction plate. See, this is pretty easy. A little messy, but it beats uh, paying somebody to do it for you. So some of you might be just have a worn out clutch and just buy a uh, OEM clutch bath, clutch plate pack. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just that you have a few less uh, of these. Friction plate and drive plate. Grab another one. Drive plate. These are always uh, one on every, every every other one. You never put two the same together. It's one, then it's the other. It's one, then it's the other. I put it in the wrong slot. Look at that. Drive plate. Getting to the end here. Friction plate. Drive plate. Now we're done to we're down to the other side, other sizes. The other ones are going to go on here. Well, screw them anyway. One of that. That other uh, dry plate with the larger diameter is going to go on here also. Don't forget your clutch bin because uh, it has to be put on from the inside out. Got that on there. One more drive plate. Okay. Now, this is another one that has the uh, inside diameter bigger. It's going to go on the shorter slots on the side. Different from all the other ones.
Don't forget this pin. I only put this on, you have to spin this and so it gets into that bag of room. There you go. You built your clutch. Now you take your uh, new springs that they gave you. Stick them in there, in there, there. Start these up. Same as taking it off to uh, just go around this pattern until you get them tight. It's only like 10, 12 newton meters. It's not much. I don't think I have a torque wrench at all. Read 10, 12. Do a little bit of time. This bike's got 30,000 miles on it right now. Just turned 30. And the clutch, the, the old plates, they still look good. So I'm going to keep these. You never know. Just in case. They say you, you'll feel a little bit different in your clutch, but it's not much. It's not bad, they said. You go. Here's your train driven oil pump. And this is the hole that you use to, uh, to lock the crank when you're going to take the cam out. You put a pin in there, it goes through the crank and then uh, locks it in place for top dead center. Like I said, if you have gasket material in here, just scrape it off. It come off of my nail, and a piece of gasket still left here. I'm not going to fully lock this up because I'm going to have to uh, get in here anyway to do the uh, the cam, but. You can guess how the rest is done. Pretty easy. See, that wasn't too bad. I got some more to get off there, but I'll just put it on real quick. I won't tighten everything up. Because when you put it on, you're going to have to uh, move that actuator over. To get to get this back on, just like it did to get it off.
Let me get a plastic scraper. Better scraper. If you knock this parts off, just make sure you don't leave it sitting in the uh, in the case and floating around your engine for who knows how long. It comes off. This makes sure all the little pieces are out of here. Like I said, I'm going to be taking this. I'm not really locking this up yet. Just make sure all this little pieces. This is what your gasket looks like. See this part here? going to line up with the case that looks just like that and you have these uh, pins they're locator pins should have two I guess the other ones in my cover oh. and it is they hold the gasket in place and they make sure uh, it goes in the right spot because you don't want to damage the gasket. I'm going to put the gasket on right now. I'm not putting oil in there right now anyway. I'll leave the website where I got this gasket from. Place in Texas. They're pretty good. They have all kinds of uh, parts for oil until. Make sure there's nothing. Uh, I have to scrape off some uh, gasket from this side too. Don't want to leave it. Might uh, might make it leak a little bit. Well. I'll work on that, but I'll just show you putting it back on. I'm going to have to turn this a little bit, probably. When you take it off, it goes way out. So I'm going to go 90 degrees. It's not sitting flat because it's, the gasket's not in there. But that's it. See, it's not a hard job. A little messy. But beats paying, paying a dealer to do it for you. For sure. 
All right, there you have it. How to change a clutch in your 650. If you're uh, following my Facebook page, I got this on the Black Friday sale. Hope people got. I know one person took advantage of it because he messaged me. But I bought all. I bought all this stuff on the the cam. Actually, the pistons really didn't. SNS wouldn't give me a thing. A discount. The cam I got from another place that had a, a normal price for this is like two hundred fourteen dollars. I think I got it for one hundred eighty. So that was pretty good. All right. Tune in next time for uh, we start taking the top end off this engine. Should be interesting. I never did that yet either. <laughs> but um, so it's okay. So if you like the video, leave a like. And if you want to subscribe, just hit the button on the bottom and you won't miss me doing the, the rest of this uh, high 650 high compression build. It's a winter project for me. Though I would rather be riding right now. Hopefully this won't take long. So bye for now, and I'll see you next time.